Now, I'll be honest, if what you're looking for is a telephoto zoom for a Canon DSLR, you're not short for options. Over the years, Canon has made dozens of these, and honestly, a lot of them are very, very cheap. So what makes the 55 through 250, particularly this older version of the 55 through 250, all that interesting? Well, the thing is, unlike most of the other sub $100 telephoto zooms for Canon DSLRs, this one isn't bad. Now here's the thing, most really low-end telephoto zooms you'll find for Canon were honestly designed to be bundled in with 18-55 through and camera body kits that are really cheap that honestly were targeted for tourists from Milwaukee for their trip to Niagara Falls. And honestly, that's what you'd think of this lens. I mean, if you look at it, it looks just like a physically longer version of the older 18 through 55 lens. So when you look at it, your hopes wouldn't be very high, especially when you look at the price, this one being around $60. Now keep that price in mind, $60, because that's what makes it so surprising that this lens, unlike all those many, many other really cheap low-end telephoto zooms, is actually pretty good. Now let's first take a look at build quality. And just visually, that would honestly be pretty concerning, because again, if you look at it, it looks just like the older 18 through 55, except longer. Now the 18 through 55, especially back a couple years ago, was horribly built, really, really low end. And honestly, this one feels a lot better. It feels much more heavy, much sturdier. You know, this is not an L lens. You're not gonna be finding a lot of metal or anything like that. It is, of course, going to have a plastic lens mount. But honestly, again, just feeling it in your hands, this feels way, way above the 18 through 55 kit lens. Again, this is actually not that much more expensive than a used 18 through 55 kit lens. So that's actually really surprising and impressive that holding it in your hand, not too bad at all. Now, another thing I want to bring up is this lens's element of versatility. You know, its ability to be used in a variety of different situations. And honestly, when you hear really cheap sub $100 telephoto zoom, you wouldn't think it's gonna be very versatile, but honestly, this one really is. So let's look what you got here. First of all, the size. It's gonna be a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and also a lot narrower than a lot of the other telephoto zooms you'll find, which makes carrying it around relatively convenient, especially if you're used to more expensive telephoto zooms, L lenses, whatever. This is gonna feel really, really small by comparison which again which is really nice you know if you're out doing wildlife photography and you're carrying around really really heavy equipment you know it could, could tire you out over time and this is going to contribute to not making that aspect of it that bad another thing i really like is actually the focal range because the thing is this is actually a surprisingly versatile focal range now the thing is 55 millimeters even on APS-C is still a pretty good focal length uh, for general purpose use now, I mean, think about it. It's basically the exact same field of view as a 50 millimeter prime. And you see people using 50 mil primes on APS-C cameras for general purpose photography all the time. So basically, you're starting at what is still very much a general purpose standard angle and going all the way to 250 millimeters. Now, on APS-C, 250 is the equivalent of about 400 millimeters. That's crossing right into super telephoto territory. So the focal range you're getting from here is going from standard angle that people use use for portrait photography, street photography, product photography, you know, general purpose stuff like that, all the way to super telephoto. That's a really, really long focal range that's going to cover a lot of different sort of tasks, a lot of different types of photography, which again is really impressive. Now, another thing too you have to keep in mind is that, of course, this is not going to replace a standard zoom or a super zoom or even a standard prime, wide angle prime for sheer versatility of focal length and focal range. Obviously, you'd rather have uh, 24 to 105 or something like that if it's going to be your only lens. But given the fact that this is a telephoto zoom, which is generally not looked at as a very versatile type of lens, you're going to get a lot of versatility out of this focal range. Now, another thing about versatility, too, is, of course, this has image stabilization. Now, that's pretty surprising. Now, I remind you, this lens could be found for around $60. There's a lot of lenses uh, that are relatively comparable th to this in some ways that are much more expensive, maybe slightly more expensive, maybe around the same price, but a lot of them really do not have image stabilization. Now, I personally am not the biggest fan of it. I don't think it's the world's most life-changing thing, but I know a lot of people really rely on it. So for some people, that's going to be a really big deal, especially when you're deciding between this lens and, say, an older Canon telephoto zoom that may have been designed for film cameras or whatever, because often some of those older ones are actually going to be pretty comparable in price, you know, sub $100. So with all that in mind for what this lens is, versatility, surprisingly good. Thumbs up there.
Now, let's talk image quality, and you think it's really bad, right? I mean, compare this to the lens, it really looks like the 18 through 55 and the 18 through 55s especially from back around when this lens was new, uh, really were awful when it came to image quality. They really had no capacity for any real sharpness at all. I mean, they were really only useful for very low resolution files at best. But surprisingly, this has very solid image quality. Now, don't get me wrong, this is no prime lens, not an L lens or anything like that. But honestly, you don't have to stop it down that far to get pretty good sharpness. I mean, if you're going to be using more narrow apertures, which is the sort of thing myself and other people who use this sort of lens may tend to do, you know, you're leaving it at F8, F11, whatever. Sharpness is going to be really, really good, definitely across the whole focal range. Again, if you have it all the way wide open, you'll have some chromatic aberration, some softness here and there. But honestly, image quality, I'd probably say, is more good than it is bad overall, which is really, really impressive for how cheap this lens is. Now, obviously, this lens isn't perfect. If it was, it wouldn't be that cheap. Now, the real flaw of this lens is going to be the focus. To put it simply, this has the worst focusing system of any lens that I'd ever actually recommend. Because here's the thing, obviously there are cheaper lenses with worse focusing systems, you know, stuff like late 90s Tamron super zooms or whatever, but those aren't lenses you'd recommend, you know those are going to be really, really bad. But of lenses that I'd actually recommend, of the lenses that I actually own, this has by far the worst focusing system. And I mean both autofocus and manual focus. So let's start with the autofocus. Uh, it's really slow. It's really slow. Accuracy is not great. It's really loud. It's creaky. Again, it's really bottom of the barrel, debatably even worse than the 18 through 55 kit lens. It's definitely slower. Uh, accuracy is probably about on par with it. Really, really poor in that way. And you'd think autofocus, maybe, okay, well, I could just switch to manual focus. Not really. Manual focus, it has a really bad manual focus system. Now, at least it has its own dedicated manual focus ring, unlike the um, 18 through 55s of the time. But even when you turn it, it's really creaky and it's really like stuck in place. You feel like you're breaking it, even when it's set to manual focus. And it also makes a lot of noise. So with other lenses that don't have full-time manual focus, when you start to turn the focus ring, when it's still on autofocus, you kind of hear the creaking sound as you're damaging it. And that's the sound this lens makes when it's in manual focus mode. So even when it's set to be used for manual focus, it's you sound like you're breaking it. So focusing is definitely a very weak point. It's honestly so bad it's to the point where you may actually miss shots with this lens because of how bad the focus is. Now it's not like unusably bad, you know, as you get used to it you'll adjust to it, you'll compensate to it, but it's a really low point and it has to be mentioned because it would just not be fair to praise all the other aspects of this lens without discussing, you know, this big flaw. So is $60 a good deal for this lens? Oh yeah, without a doubt. It is a fantastically, stupidly good deal for such a really competent lens. Great versatility, very solid image quality, very portable, great price. It's a really, really good lens. Yes, the focusing is a flaw, but considering how absurdly, ridiculously cheap is, the fact that everything else is so good makes this a great deal. And honestly, I'd sum it up this way. Now, when I use telephoto zooms, my primary zoom is going to be my 70 through 200 f4L, which is a lens that's obviously more expensive, better than this one in just about every way. And that's the one I'd obviously prefer to use. But if I was going to go shoot an event, like an outdoor wedding or whatever, and someone took away my 70 through 200 and said, hey, you got to use the 55 through 250, you know, I wouldn't prefer it, but it wouldn't be detrimental. I would still be able to do it. Image quality, still good. Focal range, even better, you know? So it's one of those things where, yeah, it's not going to be ideal in some ways, but it's very, very competent, and it's honestly, for the price, as good as it's really going to ever get for a telephoto zoom.